Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've uh, thrown a video out there. It's uh, been a busy time at work for the last uh, week or so and haven't had a chance to get around to it, but coming back strong with a Browning High Power clone. Thought we'd do something a little classic. Um, again, I've had this for a number of years. It is a clone of the Browning uh, MK2. And from what I can tell, we're looking at about a 90% um, interchangeability with the Browning parts. Um, it's a great firearm. We'll go through it a little bit closer on our tabletop. Uh, but I thought this is a great handgun. This one is uh, very nice. It is, the bluing is very good. It, you can get a lot of these in the aftermarket um, or secondary market that are pretty well beat. Uh, this comes with plastic grips. You can get wood grips on the other ones. Um, but there's a lot that are out there uh, that are fairly well beat up. But that being said, if the if the interchangeability is there, you can still get the majority of those parts very inexpensively. Uh, these are starting to go up in price a little bit. Um, I bought this about three years ago. And um, they had some really nice ones coming into the country at that point. Again, this is FEG. It's a 9mm, but um, high power clone. Let's take a little closer on the tabletop and discuss it a little more in detail. All right, so here she is, the FEG or FEG High Power. This is made in Hungary. This was imported by Inner Arms. Uh, but there's a lot of different importers that have brought them in over the years. You can take a look at them online. You'll see some varying degrees of wear on a lot of these. Um, there's some hiccups that some had, extractors, the spring might be too weak, things like that. Uh, but all pieces that can be replaced. This is based off from what I understand, the Browning Mark II or MK2. And the majority of the pieces are interchangeable. Uh, with some slight differences. I don't know exactly, but uh, that being said, majority of these pieces can be replaced very easily uh, with parts from Browning. Uh, and there's some differences too. I know when it comes to the safety and things like that, we'll talk about it. But it is a 13 round double stack magazine, uh, steel magazines, and the Browning high power magazines will work in these as well. Same cuts. Um, they're very simple stamped metal magazines uh, with a follower. These do have a magazine safety, so when there's no magazine, nada happens. So uh, I know that impacts the trigger a little bit as well as far as how clean it is, uh, but this does have the magazine disconnect already installed when I got it. Um, the grips are very nice. They're plastic. Uh, the wooden grips are nice as well, but these are very nice. They uh, have enough grip on them to really get a hold of it. Uh, but they work very nicely. They're easily interchangeable with any of the browning style uh, hand grips. So you can look for grips out there with all different designs, wood, plastic. Um, I'm sure they make uh, uh, some fancy ones as well with inlays, things like that. Since this has been around for so long. Uh, again, this is a um, uh, John Moses Browning design after 1911. Uh, this has been around for a number, number of years. Me, seen in very many conflicts, police, so all those kind of things. The sights are very rudimentary. They're just steel sights. The back is dovetailed. Uh, this one on mine looks like it's um, milled into the slide, uh, but it's a three dot, on this one at least, three dot system. And uh, you know, they're, they're basic combat sights. There's nothing fancy about them. Uh, you could take the dots out and make it just a rear blacked out if you'd like. But they are what they are and they do function just nicely. So you are adjustable on the rear sight uh, for drift. Uh, the hammer is just this ringed hammer. It does have some nice uh, lateral cuts in it to get you a good thumb grip on if you need it. Safety, I've seen some different safeties. This one is actually very nice because it does uh, stick out a little bit more. Some of them are very clean. Really depends on what they bring into the country and what they have on them. But again, interchangeability is there. If you want to put in um, an ambidextrous, you could do that as well. You know, obviously look at it first, uh, maybe contact the company, but for the most part, a lot of these should be interchangeable. Slide release, slide lock is um, just what it is. It's a slide release, slide lock. It's in there and very easy to release. It doesn't have the little, uh, I don't know if you've seen on the, some of the other high powers, little 
block here that covers um, that doesn't have on this one. Again, others that come into the country may have it or may not. Magazine release is really nice actually. It protrudes there quite a bit. Um, it does stick out so it's outside of the grip a little bit. Very easy to get to and releases nicely. The one thing I will say at least with my magazine, um, they are not, they pop a little bit enough that you can grab it but they don't foam freely. Um, in time that may work, maybe with the magazine disconnect, I'm not really sure if that would help it or not, uh, but it is what it is. But the the magazine di uh, release is very easy to get to and it protrudes very nicely to get a, a good release on it. The trigger, well, the trigger is, um, if you just play with it here, it's very easy, really smooth. Once you put a magazine in it though and you get it loaded, It is kind of crunchy because it has that magazine disconnect for one. Um, you can probably hear it. Um, so there's a lot of scraping that goes on in there and you get about a quarter inch take up on it before it breaks. It's a fairly clean break. It's not a 1911, I will say, um, but it, it pulls it very easily, probably about seven and a half pounds, I would say. Uh, but you know, it is an older design. I know you can clean these up on the inside. Again, remove that magazine disconnect will help a little bit with the trigger. Um, and then also shooting it more and more will just kind of smooth it out. But um, it's a fair, it's a you know it's a workhorse trigger. It does work. It's not super heavy. Um, it is single action only, so you're not going to get a double action pull out of it. Um, it is you know cocked and fire. Um, it does have a half cock for safety. And you can go full cock and put your hammer down for, and you can see the trigger does nothing once it's on safe. Pull it, and there you go. Um, your slide is very clean. I, I really like it. It's really smooth, really nice. Um, you can tell by the, the the design. It's still very thin, much like a 1911. Uh, it is based a lot off that 1911 design. You, you do get a good grip on some of those slide serrations. They're not very hard to get a hold of, so they work very well. Um, again, overall, you have no stippling on the front or back straps, uh, but it is uh, a comfortable width. And actually, I brought in this Glock 17 to really give you um, an idea of the size. And if we put them up side by side, you can see that they're very close in dimensions, in every dimension, actually. Um, if we line them up, you're about the same size as a Glock 17, and you get the same grip. Uh, the angle is very nice on the 19, or excuse me, on the uh, burning high power. Everything's really smooth. Um, it looks like the edges should be sharp, but it's actually very comfortable. One thing I will say, it doesn't affect me very much, but um, some people will get some uh, hammer bite out of this. As you can tell when I cock it back, it's right there at my skin. Uh, there's not it doesn't go back any much further but you can see there's a little skin inside there that may or may not cause a problem for some people depending on really how high you get up on it you could get more slight uh, hammer bite out of it um, it has never affected me like I said um, I have fairly thick hands but um, it, it's not enough to really do a lot but you may start to feel a little bit on the back here with a fair amount of shooting okay let's look at the internals and how you break it down real quick um, it's fairly easy. This one is a little more stiff, so I'm going to show you in a second. But if you bring your slide back and lock it into place, you just push this pin out, almost like a 1911. You push it across. We'll say this one is very difficult to get across, but I got it. There it goes. It's only because it's never really been shot. I mean, I've shooted a little bit, but um, it's fairly new inside. Uh, once you pull that pin out, release your slide, and it comes right off. Once you get inside, you'll see that it is very similar to the modern striker fire guns. Um, you've got your recoil spring and re your rod. Uh, very small, very short, very easy to use. And your barrel comes out just like a modern day striker fire gun. Almost looks very similar. You do have locking rings here like in a 1911 to lock it into place. But other than that, very simple. Putting it back together is just as easy. Drop the barrel in. And I've, I've seen other reports people have a hard time remembering how this goes in. Um, I can say for mine at least, 
there's a cut here. So when you put your spring back in and you load it, oops, and bring it in behind that barrel lug there, there's only one way you can put it in. Um, if you try to flip it around the other way, it won't catch because this is milled off. Um, so it's fairly easy. There's only one way it really goes in. Then we just slide it back on the frame, put your lock back in, and actually let me drop the magazine here because that will be in the way of removing or putting your pin back in. All you do is slide your pin back in, it's popped back in now, release your slide, we put our magazine back in to test it, and there we go. And there's a last round hold open as well. So on that magazine you do after your 13th round, it will hold open so you can change your magazine. And put your magazine back in and you're ready to go. All right, so that's just a quick review of the Browning High Power Clone. Um, this is a great firearm, a very soft shooting handgun. Every time I've taken to the range, it's been very easy. I like the usability of racking it. It racks very easily. Um, it, it just is really smooth. Recoil is very nice. Being an all steel handgun, again, it sucks up that recoil pretty well. Uh, but if you get a chance to pick one of these up, I would say go ahead and do it. Prices are starting to go up. High powers are really all the way up there. I mean, I love to have a high power uh, from Browning, but this is a beautiful handgun, especially if you can find them in really good shape like this. Um, if not, still the, the cost of getting them and refinishing and, you know, having some, if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to finish handguns, uh, do a little handy work, you can do some of that stuff, especially with Cerakote, so easy nowadays. The spray on stuff is really cheap and easy to do. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Share other things that I may have missed. Again, I'm not a Browning high power expert, uh, but I did want to show the, the uh, FEG and let everybody kind of take a look at it that aren't familiar with it. Uh, if you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you again soon.